Hi guys! Okay, so today I was thinking of doing a video showing you guys my whole process of how I digitize my artwork and make prints out of them for my Etsy shop. So basically everything from how I take a physical print and turn it into a digital copy of it, and then going through my editing process, which allows for the colors and for the quality to be restored. And finally, my printing settings, as well as the printer that I use. Um, I'll be going over a bunch of different stuff in this video. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know a lot of you want to start your own Etsy shops or you want to create um, a digital copy of your artwork so you can have it on your computer forever. So I thought this would be a good video to make. So first we're going to clean this guy up because, oh my gosh, it's so dirty in here. And then I'll show you guys my entire process of digitizing my artwork. All right, let's go. All right, now my room is all clean and I'm gonna get out all of my uh, original paintings. I keep them all in this folder until they sell in my shop. Um, I still have quite a few left, but uh, I am going to go with this one to uh, digitize today and create into a print because one, it's the most recent painting that I've done, and two, it has both cool and warm toned colors, which is kind of a challenge when you are trying to create a digital copy of your artwork. It just gets a little more complicated in the editing process, but I wanted to try a more challenging option uh, for this video just to show you what I would do. But yeah, uh, the first way that I digitize my artwork is a uh, using a DSLR camera. I'll either use my Canon EOS Rebel SL1 or my Canon 80D and I'll just try to get as close as I can to the picture um, to get basically all the detail in. So I try to fill it on the entire screen and then I'll take a few pictures. I usually only use this method of digitizing my artwork if the scanner that I have doesn't capture the right coloring of my um, artwork or it's a little bit faded, but usually I will use my Canon printer uh, slash scanner to scan my art. So this one is the MX922 printer. They are discontinued, but they do keep selling them on Amazon. It's just a little more expensive than it used to be, but it's just a really awesome all-in-one printer. Um, I do have a new printer, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, that I now use to print out all of my um, artwork, but this used to be my main one for like two years. So what I'm doing now is I'm just plugging in my scanner to my computer, pulling up the uh, printer scanner screen and setting it to scan and then opening the scanner and then I have this little menu pop up with a bunch of different options. So I'll first select the area that I want to scan and then set it to color and choose a 600 dpi which usually uh, seems like it works best. I've done several tests and that is the one that captures the most texture uh, from what I've seen. And the only other thing I do is change it from JPEG to a .png file, which kind of uh, holds a little bit more information in the file instead of a JPEG where you kind of lose a little quality. So uh, yeah, this is on the right side is the scan and on the left side is the uh, photo. So you can kind of see that there's a little loss of quality in the photo version, but when I'm doing acrylics and oil paintings with a lot of texture, sometimes the photo version comes out a little bit better. It captures that texture more, so sometimes I will use my camera for that. 
But anyways, I am going to edit the photo now and I sent it over to my iPad and I'm opening up the app called Lightroom. I believe this is a free app um, and you don't need like the Adobe suite or anything. And it's what I found to be the best uh, photo editor. I usually don't like to go on Photoshop or anything. I like to do everything from, from my iPad. So this is kind of like perfect for me. Um, but yeah, here I usually change the contrast a little bit. I'll increase the highlights a little bit and darken the shadows. That's just usually what I've found I do on every pretty much painting. Um, and I also lighten the whites and darken the darks. And I do this because a lot of the time the scanner will kind of be a little bit on the gray side, like it kind of mutes down the colors and the contrast. And the colors sometimes turn out different than expected. So I always have my painting right next to me when I'm doing this and I'll reference it. Most of the time I'll turn down the temperature and the tint because a lot of the time it's too yellow or magenta. And then I'll turn up the saturation. And the last thing I just do is go into the effects panel and turn up the texture and then I'll export it to my camera roll and I am going to open it in the app called Procreate which is my favorite digital art app I believe in the app store it is uh, like $12 or so but you can only use it on iPads I believe maybe phones too and this is where I will add the calendar or I'll add a new layer to do um, some custom lettering on the print. I'll also go in sometimes and add small little changes, like I'll add more stars in the background or I'll fix something that may be kind of like out of place. But yeah, you don't really need this unless you are adding something on or wanting to change something. It's actually better to not use as many apps and limit the amount of times you have to download it or send it somewhere just because every Every time you do that, it loses a little bit of quality each time. So yeah, I tried to not use a ton of different applications to edit my photo. Um, but then I'll send it to my Mac and this is where I'll pull up the downloads in Microsoft Word. But before I do that, I'm going to show you the printer that I use. And this is me opening up my printer for the first time. I was so excited. Um, I had Nick record this because I was just so excited and I wanted to capture it on camera but this was a few months ago so I've had the printer for I think three months now but I got this because I've heard a lot of artists love this printer for printing their artwork out one of the things that I was scared about buying this printer was the ink so one pack of a refill of all of the inks which there's I believe like eight or nine of them um, is $120, which is very expensive. I will just say that starting out. Um, you can buy off-brand ink, but the benefit of using the Canon inks is that you get very like true to color prints. This printer is designed to work with the Canon ink, but for this video, I'm gonna show you guys me using the off-brand inks, which are I think a third of the price. I think they were around $30 or less. We are gonna have to do a little bit of finagling in the printing settings, but I'll show you guys how I do that in a second. Um, for the printer paper, for the first prints I'll be doing, I'm gonna be doing a uh, glossy photo paper. And for the next prints, I'll be doing matte but I'll show you the glossy photo paper settings first. Um, so for the first thing that I do, I just make sure to size them correctly and I uh, choose the photo paper that I want. So I'm gonna choose glossy photo paper and set the print quality on high. Those are the only two things that I change in those options. And then I go to the color options and this is where I kind of have to mess with it a little bit. From experience with orange colors, I know the orange is gonna turn more red, so I turn down the magenta a little bit, and then I turn up the blues a tiny bit, and that's all I really do for glossy paper. And then I print it out. Um, glossy photo paper is much easier to print on. This isn't the paper that I usually use in my shop. I solely have matte photo paper in there. And the reason for that is I want to match it kind of with the matte finish of the journal paper, which usually people are pasting it into and people can easily write on matte paper opposed to glossy paper. You have to use like a Sharpie or something, but um, yeah. 
So now I'm just cutting them out with my swing line paper cutter and I'm comparing the few prints that I did uh, and I found that the scan was most definitely the accurate version. The color was perfect, the detailing was perfect, so that's the one I went with, but I am going to try it on matte photo paper now, which is a little bit more touchy, I will say. Um, matte photo paper is known to be more difficult to print on. It kind of has this graying effect or muting effect when you are printing on it. So I do have to change some settings. So first I will change the media type to matte photo paper and set the quality on high. And then the color options, I'm going to do a little bit more work on. Um, so I'm gonna in change the intensity for all of the colors that I really wanna stand out. And I also am going to change the intensity and contrast to up it a little bit. And that will make up for the muting effect that the matte photo paper has. One thing I noticed with the off-brand inks is I have to do a lot more color adjustments. So this means I have to turn down the magenta a lot because for some reason it comes up very red when I'm using the off-brand inks. And I just have to do more finagling. If you use the Canon brand, you don't really have to worry about it too much. It usually comes out almost exactly how you would want it. Um, you just have to basically up the contrast and the intensity a little bit. But yeah, this is how the matte photo prints turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of information, so if you have any questions or if there's anything I didn't touch on, you can leave your questions in the comments and I'll try to answer all of them. And just know this isn't the necessarily correct way of doing anything. This is just what I do and what I found to work best for me. And to end this video, I wanna talk about Squarespace, who's sponsoring this video today. They are a online platform that allows you to be able to create your own website super easily. I created my first website this year, which is very exciting, and I'm putting my shop on it and everything. Right now, I'm adding this cute little art gallery of all of my artwork, and I'm linking each one to the actual listing that it is in my shop, which is a really, really cool feature. But yeah, Squarespace just makes it really easy even if you haven't made a website before to just work off of templates and then make it your own. If you've been wanting to start your own website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Jenny Journals for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. i